In this video, we'll do a first look at the main slate for week one in 2021 on DraftKings. Even though it's early, we'll construct a cash game lineup and discuss some stacking options for GPP. All coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Michael, I am so pumped. It is so awesome to see the DraftKings drop their week one salaries. I can't wait to get into it, but I really want to quickly tell our viewers some other things that they need to check out during the preseason that will help them. And the number one thing, if you play NFL DFS, you want to check out our NFL DFS Masterclass. That is a nine class series where we take you through picking the right contest, deep dives on the strategies to select the right quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defense. And then we get really into the, the weeds on specific cash and GPP strategies. We got a lot of positive responses on this masterclass, and we greatly recommend that you check it out. The links will be in the description. We also wanted to tell you that we have uh, put together some videos on each of the divisions, kind of breaking down how the divisions should shape uh, up and shake out this year. We, we invite you to check those videos out as well. We tell you a little bit about who we think is going to make the playoffs uh, and a little bit about the fantasy uh, implications in each division as well. We have our Dynasty Masterclass, brand new this year, um, a, a new consultant, a uh, Jack Grant, who is a dynasty expert, walks us through some of the key strategies if you play dynasty, including how to properly draft, as well as when you're during the season to take advantage of the waiver wires and trades. If you want to support the show, please smash the subscriber button and hit that bell icon so you don't miss all the great content we have. Let's get into our DraftKings studio and let's take a look at week one. All right, we are on the main slate for week one, 2021 on DraftKings. Oh, my, my blood pressure is getting up a little bit, Michael. All right, we haven't specifically talked about this, but uh, first off, you're going to notice that there are a few teams missing uh, because they're not on the main slate. So you're not going to see any Cowboys, any uh, Super Bowl champion, Bucks, Baltimore, none of your Raiders, uh, Michael, can you uh, stash in the, the lineup, and no Bears and no Rams. So. Uh, in our NFL DFS masterclass, we usually say we like to start in running back because normally if you're going to pay up, uh, that is where you're going to go. So, Michael, looking at the top four running backs on the board, they all look so enticing. They're actually the four most expensive guys, regardless of the position. McCaffrey, Cook, Henry and Kamar. Anyone immediately draws to your eyes like I got to get this guy. All right, I'll tell you that in just one second. Just add the caveat that you did add right at the beginning, which is this is really, really early. We haven't seen what's going to happen in the preseason a little bit in terms of potential injuries, which could affect things. Uh, and we're still, you know, still, I think, you know, basing on last year and changes that have occurred, what defense are going to look like. But that's the, what we have with week one in any event. Um, but looking at this, I mean, obviously McCaffrey jumps out. He's uh, He is healthy. He's coming off of, a break from last season and he draws the jets in, in week one. Um, yeah. On, other on McCaffrey. Yeah. I mean, he's got a good environment here. You know, he's a home favorite 23 implied total is a little low, but you don't really worry about that with him because you know, he's going to get involved in both the passing game and the running game. Do you realize in 2019 and 2020, he had more than 2000 total yards and last year, he was on pace. He got injured early, but for another 2,000 uh, yard, he's the GOAT when it comes to fantasy. Yeah, and, you know, with the new coaching staff last year, not to spend too much time here, you know, we saw that the, the, the game plan was pretty much the same as in prior years, you know, you know, even with McCaffrey out in terms of, you know, giving the ball, the rock to the, the running back. So, you know, provided that he's healthy, I, I like this one. Here's a situation that I really want to do a wait and see on, on Kamara. As soon as you tell me, hey, New Orleans is home, uh, New, New Orleans uh, is, is the favorite in a super high-scoring game. I mean, the over-unders in this is 51. Uh, and by the way, they don't have Michael Thomas uh, playing. 
man, they, they, I don't know. I have a lot of guys on, on, on offense from last year. Sanders is gone. Cook is gone. They have to score from somewhere. And you figure Kamara will be a part of it. I'm just a little worried at the quarterback situation. You know, obviously Breeze is gone. If Jameis Winston's the starter, I'd seriously think about him. Remember, this is uh, DraftKings where you have a full PPR and he can just really total up the receptions. Yeah, I think they're going to trot out, trot Taysom Hill out there just to show him. But but uh, I think there's a pretty good chance that Winston's going to get a lot of the snaps, if not majority of the snaps throughout the year, but, may, but maybe not in week one. So that's a little bit dangerous. The last thing I think I'll say here is, you know, Derrick Henry is one to remember that he's like a fine whiny age as well with time. He's He gets a majority of his yards in the back half of the season, even though he prices like he should early on. And so just something to keep in mind. And that, ten, that Arizona – Defense could be stout. And, and I like Dalvin Cook, who's uh, who's playing a terrible uh, Cincinnati defense. But, man, I keep to tape. I only can spend $400 more and get McCaffrey. And uh, they are a lot of good mid-range guys. Um, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. At uh, 6,300, uh, we have Najee Harris. You know, <laughs> Michael, tell me a little bit of what's your thoughts on Najee Harris. So I saw, I saw this guy play in high school because he's from our, our home conference uh, in high school. And the guy is, was an absolute beast. We saw the same from him at Alabama. <clears throat> and not just great on the ground, but fantastic hands. Alabama, who spreads the wealth amongst the running backs, you know, waited till this last year to really have uh, him, you know, be the showcase back. And I think Pittsburgh will, will do the same. And he's fresh, right? So he's ready to, to take a beating. So I, I think that guy is going to put up substantial numbers. But he's a rookie. We haven't seen him play in the NFL yet. Yeah. Notice there's not a whole lot of information about him here. <laughs> of course, because he's, he's, he's a rookie. And, you know, he, uh, based on last, last year, an average defense uh, mm -hmm. to go against. My bigger concern is the Steelers' offensive line. But listen, Michael, close your eyes. I'm just going to tell about this next guy. Oh, you actually did it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the guy's at home. The guy's a favorite. A good 25 implied total. And um, he's going to get the goal line. He's going to get it in the passing game. He's going to be the featured back. Sound good, right? How about if the fact I have to scroll down to him at only 55,800? You can open your eyes. It's Mike Davis. Why not at only 5,400 and throw in the fact he's playing against a Philadelphia defense um, who's average at best, not bad up front, but not great linebackers in secondary. Um, they didn't do great against the rush last year, ranking uh, 22. Uh, Gurley, Ito, and Brian Hill all gone. It's Mike Davis's backfield. Yeah, no question. He's obviously shown he's got great hands as well. He's one of those three down capable backs. Uh, I think one of the dings that, that people are putting against him, or at least DraftKings, is, is that historically Atlanta has not, uh, they've, they really have used a two back system, but they have a new coach, you know, a new head coach this year. I think we could see some changes. Uh, and I don't know who else really they have to, to bring in to have a true two back system. So uh, I think that's a really good price for Mike Davis. All right. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a lineup later, but let's just slide him in now. It sounds like we have a consensus. What one guy that's going to be in our cash uh, lineup. Now, um, another player who I just want to watch, I'm not going to put him in our lineup, but I, well, maybe if we need this, if we need the price savings, it's uh, over in New York jet land. So Michael Carter, First of all, um, let's talk environment. Environment, he faces a Carolina team that didn't do well against the rush all last year. Uh, and at $4,000, the question is, will he be the uh, lead back? And we, we got to see. Um, we, as we see here that uh, he's getting early work with the first teamers. He was an early fourth round pick. And there isn't all that much competition for him um really tevin coleman a uh, former 49er is the only one that stands in their way if michael carter is named the starter man i i can't imagine uh not utilizing him at four thousand dollars look at you eric doing your research man you're in there you're, you're checking out these like uh 
bottom barrel basement guys. Uh, I, I yeah, I I think he's he's interesting to watch. But even if we see him get a lot in preseason, unless they really clearly say he's going to be the number one, this this is a stretch for me. Absolutely, I I think what's going to happen is there's going to be values that will pop up because sure. DraftKings has put this you know the their their pricing over a month ahead, so they're going to be wrong on some things. So that's just one to watch and maybe something else will come up. All right, let's move to wide receivers, Michael. So I'd like to talk about someone I am super high on this year, and that is Terry McLaren. Michael, this guy is awesome. As an individual talent, he is great. He has been saddled with horrible (laughs) quarterback play for almost his entire career on Washington. And Dwayne Haskins just was not very good. He missed him often. Alex Smith was better, but guess what Alex Smith likes to do? Dump off to his running back, dump off to his tight end. And now Terry McLaren gets Ryan Fitzpatrick, the same Ryan Fitzpatrick. Who is the guy that's like Terry McLaren in the Dolphin offense? Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker did twice as well with Fitzpatrick in the lineup as opposed to Tua because Fitzpatrick takes chances downfield. I like this guy. Yeah, no, I, I agree. He's He's been one of the the most open receivers uh, as they talk about, you know, the spread between uh, receivers and, and the defensive play. Michael, is he good enough to put in our lineup now or do we want to wait and Let's see? Let's do it. Let's oh, do it. Oh, okay. All right, Michael's in. Let's talk a little about the Cincinnati uh, Bengals wide receivers. Um, so two guys that are, are relatively cheap and almost at the same price here, we have uh, Tyler Boyd at $5,200. Uh, and somewhere here, um, a little lower at 4800 we have Jamar Chase. What do you think about the two uh, wide receivers on Cincinnati? Who do you like more and uh, in, given their price? Well, so we're, we're, we're going to have the quarterback back, right? He's, he's well, we, we think. Um, yeah, Joe Burrow. Burrow's back from his, his, his ACL reconstruction. Um, you know, he has a rapport on at the NFL uh, with Boyd. He looked good with him last year. And then he's got a rapport with Jamar Chase from his years in, in college, right? That's where they got Jamar's from LSU. So, um, I, you know, Boyd is a proven quantity in the NFL. I, I think that that's a much safer bet just because of that. Well, so by the way, I want to comment about Tyler Boyd. Just look at his stats. Um, look how well he did. Uh, during the season and then right around week 12 do you notice how it drops <laughs> gee that coincides to when joe burrow got hurt and went out so the one other guy that i wanted to talk about uh well there's there's two brandon cooks here is five thousand three hundred dollars is way too cheap if here's the big if if deshaun watson is actually playing in week one for the Houston Texans. He says he's not going to play with the Texans. He doesn't want to play with the Texans. But if, if uh, he relents and he plays, you know what? <laughs> Cooks is a major bargain. Yeah, he's clear, the clear number one there uh, in, in Houston, at least at this point, and still has his breakaway speed. I, I really like this pick as well, but with the caveat you mentioned. Uh, yeah, let's pull up Devonta Smith uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles. If you got him there. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Not, nothing here, Michael. The rookie. <laughs> <laughs> so he's a rookie and the, the Heisman Trophy Award winner this last year uh, out of Alabama. Very special talent, will be a successful wide receiver in the NFL, uh, playing the worst defense at passing defense in the NFL on a team that its receiving core is missing a Devonta Smith. And so, you know, I think that Jay, you know, Jalen Hurts, (laughs) he's coming back to Alabama. He finally gets his receiver back after having left. This Uh, is like a trend, Michael. Just draft the receiver who played with the quarterback uh, in college. That's right. Um, So I I see there being a good connection here, uh, but Devonta Smith does have a sprained knee. Is that right? Yep. So So we'll just have to monitor it. We'll have to keep our eye on that one. All right. So come on, DraftKings. Just throw up a picture on him. Come on. Uh, All right. 
here we go. Um, so we'll come back to the rest of the wide receivers and we fill a, a lineup in. Let's go to tight end. Um, you know, tight end all year is going to be the haves and the haves nots. <laughs> and the question is, are you going to want to pay up for Kelsey Killer and Waller? Waller's not on this slate. Um, what do you think, Michael? You going to want to save some money or you going to really dig in deep into the pockets for Kelsey? I think there are going to be weeks where it totally makes sense to, to, to go down deep for Kelsey. I think actually he's got a pretty good draw this first week. Cleveland wasn't particularly strong against tight ends, but it's a new season, right? And to, to pay, you know, $4,000 more uh, for Kelsey in, in, in week one, I think is a little bit, is a little bit scary. Yeah. Especially since we've got some very good tight ends in the 4,000 uh, range. Um, the two that immediately come to my mind are Logan Thomas and Kyle Pitts. Logan Thomas, a little less excited about with where I said Fitzpatrick kind of throws it all downfield. But, but look, he was the in the second half of the season, he was the best tight end uh, in the NFL, not named Kelsey and Waller. So um, what about Kyle Pitts, Michael? You keep having me pick on these rookies, but man, <laughs> talk about, you know, maybe the, the one tight end coming out this year that, that is going to have an impact right away. Uh, he had a, a, a Heisman trophy like season. They don't give him to tight ends in college, but he's a, he's, he's a wide receiver in tight ends clothing. So he's going to have a lot of grabs this year. Um, you know, uh, I, I haven't really paid too close attention to what Philadelphia did against deep uh, tight ends last year, but we see that they didn't do a great job. Uh, I think he's going to have a great, a great year. Yeah. 27th against uh, tight ends. Uh, the Philadelphia secondary is not good. Um, and don't forget that Atlanta does not have Julio Jones anymore. So their targets up for grabs. And I think a lot of them are going to be gobbled up by uh, Kyle Pitts. So at 4,400, I mean, literally almost four thousand dollars less than kelsey I, I just i can't i can't pull the trigger on on kelsey given given that if you want to go bargain basement uh really briefly let's just bring up the fact that uh we've got uh on tennessee at let's see three thousand two hundred dollars uh we have uh anthony Ferkshire. Remember, Jonu Smith has been traded, so uh, you hope that he plays a larger role in this offense, although they do have Julio Jones now. Uh, and uh, if you're looking about opportunity, Michael, <laughs> and you want to save money, what about Adam Trotman? So, yes, Jared Cook is gone, but it's not just him sliding into that role of Jared Cook. Michael Thomas will not play in week one. Um Emmanuel Sanders has been traded and they did not replace Emmanuel Sanders by bringing in a free agent. So somebody's got to catch the ball. And at $2,900 price, he doesn't have to do a whole lot. So if you need salary relief, he's at least an option. Um, all right, let's move on. Let's talk quarterback. We, we, uh, we delayed it long enough. Um, and, and here comes the questions again. Do you want to pay up um, for a Mahomes, a Kyler Murray, or a Josh Allen, they're all very expensive. And my comment is, you know what? You can save some money with some guys that I think are really, really good. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little nervous about Aaron Rodgers, uh, you know, what things are going to look like this year. But that was what I said last year before he had an absolutely fantastic season. Um, because I knew he was frustrated by uh, the love that uh, <laughs> Utah State's quarterback was getting. Um, <laughs> and, and we see that he's still kind of a little butthurt about that now. Uh, I think he's, he's going to focus on individual performance. I see him, him having another good year. Oh, your puns. Your puns. They really hurt. As in Jalen hurts. Um, gosh, God. You know what? If you ever thought that there was a guy uh, who I think is better in fantasy than in real life, it's Jalen Hurts. Um, this guy is incredible because of what he does on the ground. He's six foot one, 223 pounds. He is like a running back back there. 
uh, in his three, uh, his four starts, he averaged 68 yards rushing. Uh, that's incredible. And uh, with three TDs. So throw that in the fact that, uh, by the way, his matchup is a dream matchup against Atlanta. We talked about worst last year in the NFL against the pass. Uh, he, he has a shiny new weapon in uh, Devonta Smith. Um, at $6,400, I really like him as uh, an option. Now, we want to make sure he's healthy. But how about Joe Burrow at $5,700? Um, this, I believe, is going to be a shootout, uh, 48 overall, uh, over, under, and they're just a three-point dog, so it should be back and forth. Minnesota's defense <laughs> is not good, um, and um, they did improve a little bit in the offseason, but I still think that they'll be exposed. I think we both really like Joe Burrow, and we like uh, his weapons that he has. Yeah, no, I'm a huge fan of Joe Burrow. We saw what he was trending to do towards the end of the season or his season last year. He uh, he's a special talent. They're going to have to throw the rock. It's going to be a, it's going to be a shootout. I agree. What about All right. You? So let's, let's, um, let's, uh, let's hold off on, well, real quickly, we're not going to spend touch time on defense. Look, we're, we're four weeks away from the season, but uh, real quick that jumped out at me. Uh, what are the Colts doing at only $2,300, Michael? <laughs> <laughs> they're bargain basement they're home they're favored and you know what my seahawks uh, i love them but their offensive line is not the best uh and russell wilson can hold on to the ball a lot and he can get sacked a lot um and uh at only two thousand three hundred dollars uh i kind of i kind of like yeah, no, I think the benefit of, of this first week is they put out the pricing a little too early, right? But uh, but come on, we can't really make decisions on defenses this early, Eric. Yeah. Next well, topic. <laughs> all right, let's move on. But all right, Michael, so we got to fill out our lineup. Who's the first guy you want to add on there that deserves a, a, a ticket in? Well, so um, we talked about Boyd uh, and Jamar Chase, but uh, I think Boyd's a little bit of a safer pick. Burrow's going to get in there in week one. I, I think let's go ahead and put him in there since he's so cheap. All right, but let's remember, we if we need $400 later. <laughs> we'll come back to Chase. Well, well, guess who I want? <laughs> uh, C-Mac, let's put him in there. Yeah, uh, put C-Mac in. All right, that really hurt our overall salary. <laughs> So um, we're going to need to, to be a little uh, cost conscious. Um, God. Does that mean we got to go with your guy, Troutman? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can up, up, upgrade the Ferkshire if we need to. If you know we, what, between the, between the two, I, 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 I think I like Troutman just as much. So yeah. let's save the $300 and go with him. All right. So, um, so okay, the last uh, the last spot we let let's go with Najee. I know this is gonna cost some money. Let's uh, go ahead with the Colts at defense. That leaves seven thousand two hundred dollars at quarterback. Um, so we can love to get Deshaun Watson in there if he actually is playing. Um, we can go Aaron Rodgers and potentially upgrade elsewhere. Or, or Michael, tell me, tell me, what, tell me if you like this. I have a feeling you're gonna like this. You were having difficulty swallowing uh, <laughs> trauma, so uh, you can go with Pitts. And does this scare you, Michael, that we have three rookies? <laughs> yeah, you know what? It does a lot. It's yeah. four. It's it's four rookies, by the way. Oh, the, who did I miss? Najee. Oh yes, oh yeah, oh my. So yes, this is this is a little bit sketchy, but if you are you know excited about the rookies, you go with this. Otherwise, I think you go back with Troutman. Take advantage of the extra dollars that you get um, at uh, with with Hertz or or someone um, uh, like Tannehill in the quarterback position, and you do an upgrade at the wide receiver position. All right, Michael, that's cash. Let's take a look at what people should be thinking about for GPP. You always want to stack in GPP, increase your correlation, and 
increases your volatility. So that's pairing a quarterback with at least one of his wide receivers and running it back the other team. So I always want to pick a, a GPP stack where it's high scoring. The, the Minnesota and Cincinnati game, the over under is 48 and Burrow to his two weapons, uh, Boyd and uh, Jamar Chase are both uh, reasonably priced and you can run it back with the cooker Jefferson. All right. So this is the part where you guys really help us as the community. Let us know how you would adjust this lineup. Or if there was a player you think that had great value that we missed, enter it in the comment section. Let us know. Obviously, we're going to monitor all this situation. So, uh, and we will come back, Michael and I, with our lineups for week one on DraftKings about a week, a week and a half before the season when we see a lot more preseason games. Until then, we will see you guys next time. Check out one of the videos that are on the screen now. Thanks, guys. Stay safe.